I'm going to show you how to work with high dynamic range imagery in Affinity Photo. Photo has long supported the underlying technology to visualize high dynamic range images, but the capability for end users to see these images as intended has typically been limited to televisions and expensive high-end monitors. This video has been recorded in HDR, so if you are viewing it on a supported display or device, you will be able to appreciate just how high dynamic range can transform images by allowing them to be represented with an extended brightness range. There are several different workflows, depending on whether you do bracketed photography, single exposure photography, or work with 3D renders. So I'll cover all of these. I'll also show you how to take existing standard dynamic range content, such as stock images, and expand it to high dynamic range. Let's start with bracketed photography. To take a series of bracketed exposures and merge them to an HDR document, I can go to File, New HDR Merge. I'll click Add here, navigate to where my bracketed images are stored, select them, then click Open to add them to the files list. On the dialog, I'll uncheck Noise Reduction, as these are pre-processed, out-of-camera JPEGs. Leave it on, however, if you are using RAW files. I'm also going to uncheck Tone Map HDR Image, then click OK. Unchecking Tone Map HDR image will prevent Affinity Photo from going directly to the Tone Mapping persona once the merge has completed. We don't want to tone map the image to standard dynamic range, so this saves us the extra step of having to cancel out of the Tone Mapping persona. Now, at this point, you may already be seeing the high dynamic range result on screen if you are using a compatible display. We also start with the Clone Brush tool selected for manual ghost removal. But we don't need this, so I'll use H to switch to the View tool. Before we go any further with image retouching, let me walk you through the HDR viewing process. I'll go to Window, 32-bit Preview, and this will show the 32-bit Preview panel in the bottom right here. This is where we can toggle high dynamic range viewing. On Apple devices, this is referred to as Extended Dynamic Range, or EDR. If I uncheck Enable EDR here, Affinity Photo will no longer map those high dynamic range values to the extended brightness range of the display. So now all those values will simply clip to the maximum intensity of standard dynamic range. Dragging the preview exposure slider down will reduce the linear exposure level, and I can keep going until I can actually see detail in the brightest areas of the image. Please do note that these two sliders only change the exposure and gamma of the document view. They do not alter pixel values of the image. Changing these options is mostly useful for when you cannot accurately preview the entire dynamic range of the image and need to check how your retouching work is affecting bright and dark pixels. I'll reset exposure to zero and gamma to one. For all standard workflows, you will also want to leave display transform set to ICC Display Transform. Unmanaged will show you the linear pixel values with no gamma transform applied. This is also known as Scene Referred as opposed to Display Referred. To ensure consistency with the exported result, we will need to switch back to ICC Display Transform. I'll now re-enable EDR on Mac or on Windows, this will be HDR, and we will now see the high dynamic range values return. The brightest values in this image easily exceed a peak reference value of 1000 nits or 1000 candela per square meter. So what I might do is add an exposure adjustment and bring the overall linear exposure of the image down. If I wanted to give the foreground detail more contrast, an easy approach would be to add a brightness contrast adjustment. This adjustment only works on standard dynamic range pixel values, so I can change both sliders without altering the high dynamic range content at all. Other changes can be made as well. For example, I might add a white balance adjustment to change the overall temperature of the image. A small adjustment of 5% lends the image a warmer tone. Once I'm happy with the result, I can export to an image format that supports high dynamic range. I'll go to File, Export, and on the Formats list at the top, 
I can currently export to EXR and JPEG XL. EXR is more designed for interchanging between color managed workflows and is not really suitable for distribution purposes, so I'll choose JPEG XL instead. Apart from changing the quality to compress the image and achieve a smaller file size, there is nothing else to configure here. I can then choose to export to this deliverable format that supports HDR. Now let's move on to how you would process a single raw image to HDR. Many cameras have a suitable level of dynamic range for this process, especially if the shot is intentionally underexposed to capture more highlight detail. For my first example, I'm going to use a linear DNG RAW file shot with an iPhone 14 Pro. The capturing process on the iPhone when using Pro RAW merges several different exposures together to produce a RAW file with greater dynamic range. However, if I bring this RAW file straight into photo without first configuring it for HDR compositing, pushing the entire exposure of the image up will simply clip the highlight tones. I first need to change a particular setting on what we call the Develop Assistant dialog, which can be accessed by clicking here. All I need to do is change raw output format to RGB 32-bit HDR, and you'll notice the Tone Curve option changes to Take No Action. It is imperative that you leave this set to Take No Action, as applying a Tone Curve is a bounded process that will clip the highlight values. Now we need to reload this image before the change will take effect. I'll cancel out of raw development, but before I reopen the image, I'll show you that you can also access the develop assistant without having to load a raw file first. If I click on the assistant preferences up here, it will take me to the assistant category. We can then see a develop assistant button here, and clicking it will open that same dialog where we can change the raw output format. I'll now reopen that raw file. This time, when I bring the exposure slider up, rather than most of the sky becoming clipped, we can now see the range of extended brightness values being mapped to the display. We can experiment with various techniques to bring more attention to the foreground detail, as it is rather tonally flat at the moment. One such technique would be to increase the clarity slider, which will enhance structure within the image. And this also lends a dramatic look to the cloud detail in the sky. Also, for a display with a peak brightness of 1000 nits, the sun is too bright. To reduce the overall brightness range of the highlights without darkening the foreground detail, I can enable shadows and highlights and bring the highlights slider down. The result is still suitably bright, but the detail in this area can now be seen. We also have access to the 32-bit preview panel in the Develop Persona. It defaults to being collapsed down here, but I can click to expand it. This lets me disable EDR or HDR, so we can see clearly which areas contain brightness values outside of standard dynamic range. I'll enable it again and click Develop. We're now in the main Photo Persona, where we can work with non-destructive layers. I'll add a Curves Adjustment with Command-M on Mac, Control-M on Windows. Now, if I click drag to add a node and move it around, notice it will currently affect the standard dynamic range values, like the Brightness Contrast Adjustment. However, notice there are min and max values down here, currently set to 0 and 1. 0 to 1 is regarded as standard dynamic range, with anything outside of this regarded as high dynamic range. If I increase max to around 10, notice that the bright sky detail is now being affected by this curve graph. And if I increase max to 50, I'm now darkening the very bright highlights of the sun. Changing min to 1 and leaving max at 50 means I am now only affecting high dynamic range values. So if I bring the node up, it will now brighten the sky and sun detail. I might now change max to 2, which will stop the very intense values around the sun from becoming brightened further. As with the previous example, I could now choose to export this image to JPEG XL or another format that supports high dynamic range. I'll quickly show you an example of a raw image acquired from a traditional camera rather than a phone. This image actually fits into the confines of standard dynamic range well enough.
but we can take advantage of high dynamic range to really bring out the bright detail. First, I'll push the exposure up so that the general detail is well exposed. Toggling EDR or HDR reveals that the highlight details are already well into high dynamic range, but we can expand them further. Using the highlight slider, this further brightens those high dynamic range tones and makes the image really come alive. If I click Develop and move to the Photo Persona, we may then be in a position where we need to modify the exposure further. One benefit of working in 32-bit HDR is that this is an unbounded color space. The RGB data is only bounded by chromaticity and not luminance. This means that exposure values can be pushed and pulled with ease without the risk of clipping. I can add an exposure adjustment, then bring the slider down, and you will see that all the highlight detail is readily available, so we can easily tone map and create a standard dynamic range version of this image if we need to. For example, I'll increase the exposure significantly, then I'll merge this exposure adjustment down onto the main image layer to destructively commit it, and I'll enter the tone mapping persona. Despite the fiercely bright pixel values, the tone mapping persona will tone map the image to standard dynamic range, with the overall tone compression being controlled by this slider. But for now, I'll cancel out of tone mapping and return to my HDR editing workflow. Do remember to reset your raw development settings when you move back to standard dynamic range editing. Editing in 32 bit uses linear compositing rather than gamma-corrected compositing, and for regular editing it can result in some different behaviours, especially when performing tonal changes with adjustment layers and other tools. For most workflows outside of HDR, you are better off sticking to 16-bit gamma-corrected compositing. Now I'll move on to a 3D render example. Most 3D rendering software allows you to save as Open EXR or Radiance HDR formats. These formats support unbounded pixel values, and the unbounded values can then be mapped accordingly within a high dynamic range color space. I'll open this multi-channel EXR document, which is a scene I've created and rendered using Blender. I've chosen to save some of the render passes along with the final render pass. In this case, the final render, which is the combined layer, is not immediately visible. I'll drag it to the top, and we'll then see that the high dynamic range values are already being mapped straight away. As with the other examples I've shown, we can use various methods to control the highlight intensity. If the whole image is too bright, I can use an exposure adjustment to bring the overall exposure down. I could then use a curves adjustment and target just the 0 to 1 range of pixel values using the graph to darken and add more contrast to these tones. I might then add a Live Shadows Highlights filter and bring the Highlights Strength slider all the way up to make the bright highlights more intense. I can also use the Highlights Range slider to control the range of highlights that are brightened. I'll also drag the Emit Render Pass and place it just above the Combined Pass then set its blend mode to add. This contains the emission information of the light on the bike here. I can add a live Gaussian blur to this layer and bring the radius up for a powerful glow effect. This is far too strong, so I will close the dialog, select the parent emit layer and bring the opacity down to 5% by typing 05 in quick succession on the keyboard. When working with HDR content in 32-bit, it's best to use Add, which is a linear addition of pixel values, rather than Screen. This will avoid producing unpredictable results with unbounded pixel values. Finally, I want to show you that you can actually take any form of imagery and create a high dynamic range composition from it. I'm going to open this JPEG from Shutterstock. This is a compressed 8-bit image file with bounded pixel values. What I can do now, however, is go to Document, Convert Format slash ICC Profile, and change from RGB8 to RGB32.
I'll stay with sRGB, but you can also use a wider color space, if you wish, for even more intense colors. There is no change. That's because our pixel values are currently within the 0 to 1 range. A very basic way of creating HDR values is to simply add an exposure adjustment and bring the exposure slider up. This pushes the pixel values above 1 and creates a very powerful looking high dynamic range image. We may want to restrict the areas of the image that actually become significantly brighter. For example, it doesn't make much sense for these foreground areas to become so bright. I can add a live luminosity range mask to the exposure adjustment, then drag the left hand node down and create a third node to produce a nonlinear graph that blends the exposure adjustment out of the darker areas in the image. I can close this dialog, then temporarily hide the luminosity range mask to demonstrate the difference it makes. Without it, the entire image's exposure is arbitrarily boosted. But with it, the effect is much more dramatic and the viewer's attention is drawn to the light in the middle. Again, if I wanted to export this as an HDR image, I could go to File, Export, and choose a suitable format, such as JPEG XL. There is one last aspect of high dynamic range image editing to address. How to produce a standard dynamic range version of your images. I briefly showed one method earlier when using the tone mapping persona, but there are other ways of tone mapping that you can employ as well, which are non-destructive. If you are watching on YouTube, please do have a look at the videos shown at the end of this video. Alternatively, you can find and watch tutorials such as HDR merging and tone mapping, and procedural texture, non-destructive HDR tone mapping. The videos Batch Processing and PSD slash PSB Import, Export and Smart Object Functionality also cover tone mapping towards the end as well. And there we go, a comprehensive look at how to work with high dynamic range imagery in Affinity Photo. I hope you found this video useful and thank you for watching.